Good morning, everyone. Hi. Um, we're here to talk about chatbot superpowers, how chatbots can give us all superpowers and the democratization of AI via chatbot. And this will all connect back beautifully to AR, you will see. Um, oops, don't read it yet, don't read it yet. Okay, uh, my name is Natasha Merritt. I'm an artist by training. I have a deep digital media background. Um, I've published a few books, created a few Cirque du Soleil shows. Um, and recently, about a year ago, I joined West Summit Capital to spearhead their VR, AR investment strategy. And now I was just put in charge of chatbots as well. And being a developer, I tend to build with whatever tools I may potentially invest in. Um, we led Unity's B round, which was a while, a while back. Um, we also invested in Twitch and Movidius. And together, all these companies really do make up the backbone of VR and AR. Um, this is Ron. Hi, everyone. Uh, I uh, have spent my career in Silicon Valley and perhaps uh, am best known for being the founder of Nuance Communications. Uh, Nuance is today a $2 billion revenue business that <coughs> dominates the voice recognition and voice user interface, natural language understanding space, um, kind of the only large global pure play in speech. Um, I uh, spun the technology out of SRI and ran it to the point of IPO. Um, and then have taken a bunch of time off and done a bunch of interesting things. And I'm back in a new and, and different role. Uh, I'm an investor uh, as part of a group that is focused in a category that we have defined as brand tech. So it's how brands go to market using technology uh, to market themselves faster, better, and cheaper. Um, the group is only two years old. It's called You and Mr. Jones. There actually is a Mr. Jones, but it's a, a global uh, group that's based in uh, New York, Paris, London, and San Francisco. Um, and our notable first investments also figure quite directly into the topic uh, of today and, and of the conference. So we were the first outside investor to invest in Niantic Labs. Um, everybody, I think, probably knows that Niantic is the developer um, of Pokemon Go. Uh, you know, the, the biggest phenomena in AR uh, and basically in gaming, I think, in history. Um, people often ask us when they hear that, wait a minute, you mean you invested before it became the phenomena? If you think about that, it's kind of a funny question because that would be the only interesting time uh, to, <laughs> to invest in it. Once it's uh, become the phenomena that it's in, its valuation and position in the market is quite different. Um, we also have an investment in Zappar, which is uh, here, Zappar does a merged or mixed reality uh, development toolkit called Zapbox at a very low price point, looking for a broad-based uh, market penetration, and has done a variety of brand-oriented custom AR uh, projects. And lastly, we're also an investor in Automat, which is a Montreal-based company that um, takes a very high-end approach uh, to chatbots and uh, actually has um, gone a lot further than the, the somewhat pejorative uh, label chatbot um, to pos position the company around conversational marketing. And as we're interested in brands and brand marketing, doing it conversationally uh, with bots uh, becomes very interesting. Okay, let's take a moment to read this. It's worth it. Oh, no, geez, this one. Oh. <laughs> this, I don't know. It's not Jump. stopping there. Okay, go ahead. Okay, here we go. So it's a pizza delivery. Brian, your next automated pizza delivery is scheduled for Saturday, February 25th at 12. To confirm, type yes. To decline, no. Thank you, Papa John, you handsome man. I shall call you the Cabos Vixen. A carbs vixen. We're sorry, we didn't understand. Please confirm or decline. When I make love, I imagine you tossing some dough shirtless. Dude, our automated system isn't set up yet. This is a real person texting you. I make minimum wage. Please just tell me if you want pizza. All right. I, I, I love this piece because this is actually what inspired me to pitch this talk. Um, in this 
chatbot interaction, potentially chatbot interaction or human interaction, we see what could potentially be the ultimate Turing test, right? Say something really rude to see if it's a robot. If it's a human, the human will be offended. If it's a bot, it won't. And that's a really interesting topic that we will save for later. Um, but also, we see that humans are, we're getting pretty emotional with our robots. Like, we're just going for it. Um, but also, this is, the changing, this is the changing face of work. Dude's probably going to lose his job shortly. And work is evolving. So let's, let's, let's have a look at how chatbots are really affecting us. OK, so we're not here to talk, debate whether the future of AI is this pleasant, utopic. And we're not, ah, we're not here to debate whether it's, whether it's this. We're not here to debate whether it's dystopian. But we are here to talk about how computing, con conversing with a computer can be awesome and can lead to real business opportunities. OK, I'm going to just try to. Uh, uh, articulate some vocabulary because when people talk about uh, conversational chatbots and conversational uh, or natural language understanding, they tend to sort of munge together all the moving parts. And what our talk is about is actually how the important moving parts do start to come together to make very intelligent, emotionally uh, useful, emotionally aware, uh, uh, let's call them chatbots. So chatbot um, started uh, probably as any online automated persona that you could engage with. Um, Nuance made its mark by automating uh, the uh, customer serv service agent in the call center um, with an automated system that replaced the touchtone or DTMF system or the human. Um, that was probably the first large scale case of chatbots. Today, it's much more about being in the uh, messaging channel, which is sort of the, the dominant go-to-market path um, for uh, chatbots. Um, David Marcus from uh, Facebook, who runs the Messenger business, says that there are 100,000 developers um, on the platform, on Messenger, building chatbot uh, interactions. Uh, conversational computing is a label that seems to be popular in the media. Uh, uh, the Economist ran a cover story which was essentially about um, Amazon Alexa, uh, but labeled it conversational computing, sort of the, the aha moment that's been recognized by journalists um, every two, three years for the last 25, 30, or 40 years that speech recognition is going to change the way we interact with computers. And they munge that together by talking about the fact that there's speech recognition working in front of some computing activity. And I think that does a disservice to both the computing side and the, the conversational side. I know some of you might be old enough to remember the pen computing uh, phenomena that was labeled that because we had stylus and screen interactions that failed miserably. Um, the leading company was Go, and it was funded heavily by VCs. Um, so that was called pen computing. I think we want to stay away from conversational computing and talk about the component elements that actually make this all work. Um, and what I would prefer instead is the idea of a voice user interface. Some people call it a VUI. That's not very, uh, doesn't roll off the tongue. Um, but we have different kinds of user interfaces to different kinds of computing activities. Desktop is different than mobile, is different than <coughs> even Amazon Alexa, which at first was screen less, which was a phenomena or a breakthrough. And just this week, they announced the screen-enabled uh, uh, Amazon Alexa. But with all of that, you have a voice user interface that means you can talk to uh, an automated system of some sort or a computing system of some sort. And then underneath that, underneath the speech recognition, by the way, Mary Meeker's report out, I think this morning or yesterday, um, says that speech recognition has now arrived at the 95% accuracy level, which is equivalent to human recognition of speech. So there's functionally no difference between what a human can understand and now what the computer can understand. And we've been asymptoting to that for a long time. So it's not actually a significant step function or breakthrough um, to get there. But underneath the speech recognition is the understanding, with the natural language processing, or the NLU, the natural language understanding. And that's a much harder problem. Um, and it's harder to measure, and there aren't uh, widely available statistics because there aren't so many standardized uh, tests, if you will, or bake-offs 
um, to measure that. Um, so underneath speech recognition and NLU, there is a layer of machine learning going on that didn't happen uh, before that makes the speech recognition and the NLU and the computing uh, activity um, more effective, more accurate, more productive. Um, in the Siri case, talk about munging things together, people thought um, the speech recognition doesn't work, I'm really frustrated with Siri. But if you ever look and see the transcription that's actually displayed on the screen, it's quite accurate. Um, the Siri team talked about three levels of technology, speech recognition, NLU, and what they called the do engine. And the breakdowns of uh, Siri typically, even today, quite frequently, are the breakdowns in the do engine, which is sort of the intelligence or the AI um, behind the system. So I think it's useful as you think about chatbots and the component technologies and how we interact, um, to think about these different technologies uh, as discrete uh, problems, if you will, discrete research problems or core uh, technology problems. And just to wrap that all up, interestingly, chatbots today are primarily text interaction. They're, we're back to the keyboard or back to button pushing uh, on the mobile phone. We aren't really seeing much yet in terms of voice interaction, um, so the conversational computing isn't really that relevant yet. Um, voice user interface doesn't matter, it's about text uh, interaction and the NLU and NLP does matter and becomes actually uh, more important. So that's sort of the landscape, if you will. Did I get it? Oh. Yeah, we're good. Um, okay. So just one, one uh, underlying uh, statistic or, or, or uh, profile, if you will, of messaging. Um, according to this slide, um, the number of active users in uh, messaging uh, in the top four apps in the world globally surpasses the number of active users in social media. Um, this is obviously um, much more prominent in Asia, but catching on and becoming important here. So the assertion that we need a way, or there will be a way, by which messaging becomes much richer than just texting your friends. Uh, in fact, David Marcus asserts that it'll be all about enterprises connecting with their marketplace and their consumers, um, is already well established in terms of the underlying infrastructure of messaging penetration, if you will. It's just the, the automation of the, of the chat, if you will, is in the process of catching up. Uh, okay, I'm having a big problem with these buttons. Okay, um, and so if, how many of you guys are AR developers in the room? Any AR developers? VR? VR, AR, chatbot? Nobody? Okay, um, so if you want to start playing with this conversation as an interface, I would recommend one of these three platforms. I'm not invested in any of them, by the way, um, but I have used them. Chat Fuel is probably the easiest to just start to build a bot. See what it does. See how, how you can work with it. See how you can start to in incorporate some natural language APIs, and all of a sudden, you know, your messages might be understood in different ways. I think it's really important as you start to pivot or design a company or decide what company you want to focus on, um, that you are aware of these tools that are available to really create an extension of your uh, ability to converse, whether it's for sales, medicine, um, healthcare, and all, all fields can um, benefit from these platform, from you playing with these platforms. Sorry again. Okay, so chatbots and AR convergence. I think that's what um, many of you are here to, to hear about. So the workflow is that first you build a text-based uh, a conversation with one of these chatbots. And you could potentially, like I say, start playing with these open source natural language API frameworks. Um, then you export to a voice type Alexa. So just like if you're building in Unity, you check a few boxes and you can export to these different um, voice-based uh, machines. Then potentially you could Im incorporate these conversations and this intelligence that you're building into 3D avatars. And that's where it really starts to become interesting. Um, because with smart content, we are actually going to be able to revisit the content. And as an investor, I see a lot of really interesting content company pitches. And it's exciting and, 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 and I love content. The problem is it's not scalable and it's not sticky. There's not much to keep me coming back to see this content. Whereas as soon as we start to talk about the intelligence of the content, then I become attached to these characters and the business models become much more apparent. Um, so smarter content equals a stickier experience, and it's much more scalable. So keep this in mind. I mean, don't go adding AI to all your decks overnight, but definitely start to build and start to think about it. 
Um, so Michael Brash just at OC3 recently said, the development of virtual humans is going to be the single most important factor in making VR a part of our everyday lives. And, that, and that's true, and he's amazing, visionary. Um, and it is important for these virtual humans to look and feel uh, human, that, that's important. But much more important, in my opinion, is for them to be able to converse with me, to remember me, to know me, and to you know, start to build together. That, that's what's going to matter, in my opinion, more so than the detail of the hair in the short term. Um, did I get it? Oh, damn. OK. Um, is this going to play? Do we have the play button? Yeah? It's, OK, so this content by Quantum Capture, a company based out of Toronto, um, is completely procedurally generated. So they uh, create a bunch of expressions, and then you can take the, um, and then you could directly export via a bridge from those platforms I was talking about um, and have these characters start to speak. This is a giant leap, leap forward, in my opinion, uh, in terms of content creation. Okay, so we're also getting emotional with our bots. And let me explain. Um, so Slack is a, a bot platform as well as other things. Um, and so is Kik. 54% of users send images to Slack. Um, Kik, which is more teenager-centric, 72% um, of users send selfies to bots, meaning you know it's the bot, and for some reason, you're sending the bot an image of yourself. Now, what does that mean? What, are we, what do we want? We want these, these robots to see us, to understand us, to know who we are. And that's like a really, really interesting development. Um, APIs also can enable your bot to classify images. So you can add an image recognition API to your bot so that when somebody sends images of, you know, do you like my shirt, the bot can say, oh, that's a nice shirt. I see it's Wonder Woman. You know, what, what, what other kind of shirts would you like, for example? These are all things that are available to us right now. Um, we didn't actually talk about the democratization of AI slide because I skipped it, so I'm just going to make a little side note to, 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 <laughs> to explain. Um, a few years back, uh, you needed three years of advanced, advanced mathematics just to start to dabble in AI. Now, with a bit of coding, you can start to play with these APIs. Um, and build. And soon, everybody will be able to build bots to be extensions of themselves. Oh, and 70% of bots have received messages of love or hate. So there's more on that. Um, skipped one again. I skipped one again. I don't, can there you do you, it? You're good now. One okay. more to go. <laughs> okay. So here's a, an amazing use case. So her, I don't know how many of you saw the movie. Raise your hands. Awesome. It's like my favorite movie. Um, so her is happening. So Xiao Ice, uh, this 16-year-old 16, 16 bot in China, um, has over 20 million users. People use her every day. They talk about their problems. They talk about their dreams and goals. She remembers the dreams and goals the next day. People are very, very attached to her. 20% um, of users say, I love you. And I have a seven-year-old daughter, and she's constantly saying, I love you or I hate you to Alexa, as if it was the most natural thing. I'm like, you know this is, this is a bot. She's like, it doesn't matter. She's in our lives. So that's a really interesting development. Well, and to conclude, Eventually. OK. So beyond Alexa, I think chatbots are going to give us all superpowers. Uh, personal bots uh, will, will be extensions of us. There's bots that can fight your par parking ticket, for example. There's another bot that you can get. It's the Comcast fighting bot. And it can fight with the Comcast, Comcast bot until your bill is resolved. But this is really interesting, right? I mean, what if you had bots on all of your different projects? And furthermore, instead of even going, looking through a website, why not just talk to it and have it pull up exactly what you need in your style because you've trained that bot. This is all really interesting. Um, so eventually we'll have our personal AI to replicate our own skill set that can or cannot be part of an AR experience. And there'll be digital versions of you so that all of your text messages and who you are with your bot can one day replicate yourself for your kids when you're gone. So I think that uh, starting to think about bots is, is really important. Um, yeah, that's, that's it for me. OK, so we're going to ask each other some questions. How much time do we have? Oops. <laughs> well, I know this is, this is the last soon session. Soon my bot will be online and you can ask my bot a bunch of questions. Um, this is the last section of this session. So anyone that needs to leave or wants to leave, we won't be insulted. Anyone that wants to stay and chat or ask questions or listen to us as, 
I assume that's okay with the guys in the back. Thank you.